of a sudden he says, Israel can take care of herself, and the feed mysteriously starts to die out. We gotta be careful. When you're challenging the system, it's easy to get paranoid. But that was a little suspicious. That was, that was... Yeah, it smelled a little funny. But it doesn't matter because afterwards, while CNN still had their live feed camera that was now working, trained on the stage, Ron Paul brought this man back up to finish his remarks. He's continued to speak out. He posted a video in his civilian attire that he posted on his own time and made clear in which he was speaking on his own behalf and not on behalf of the military or in any official government capacity. And he was asked by his command to take it down. I was very fortunate to have ripped the version of it before then. We were able to republish it and get the word out. But I'm honored right now to be able to follow in Dr. Paul's footsteps and welcome to the stage, Corporal Jesse Thorson. a lot of people first, Adam Kokish, Nate DeCox, all the organizers of this event, and most importantly, everybody out here today who's here right now, the people who've carpooled, the people who've traveled all the way across the country. I want to thank every veteran out there who served, my beautiful wife who's here in the crowd, five months pregnant with our daughter, we just found out we're having a daughter on Friday, and I, and I want to specifically thank every family member and spouse out there because I know your jobs are just as tough as ours. Thank you. You don't get enough credit for that. Like many of you already know, I was uh, the reservist that went up, spoke at the Iowa caucus, and uh, Ron Paul invited me on stage. Got to go up to his room and meet him, and I was completely humbled by how sincere and genuine he really is. When he uh, when he shook my hand and kind of squinted his eyes and smiled the way he does, uh, I could tell he was happy meeting me, and, and I think that was awesome. And I apologize for the hoarse voice, by the way. I've been screaming Ron Paul Revolution for so long that it's, it's starting to go out on me. Yeah. You know, the, the biggest issue there was that military people do support Ron Paul in a big way because we appreciate his idea on foreign policy. We appreciate his care for us. He supports us, and we are going to support him. Yeah! I came up here today, and I didn't write anything down. I didn't script anything. I didn't rehearse anything. I said, I'm just going to speak from the heart. And I, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm addressing a thousand Ron Paul supporters. I'm addressing a thousand of my brothers and sisters out there. And I think it's amazing that everybody's coming together in this way to bring awareness and to spread Ron Paul's message. I also want to point out that, as a lot of veterans, there are a lot of people that are slipping through the cracks of the system. They're coming home, and they're, they've spent a year overseas, and the government's handing them a piece of paper saying, okay, I know you've been gone for a year. Uh, have you, are you having sleep problems? Are you having uh, anxiety problems? And you're looking at this piece of paper going, hmm, if I check yes, I'm going to be stuck here for another two months. Screw this, I want to go home and see my family. So we all pencil in no, no, no on everything, and then we avoid the real issues of, of substance abuse and PTSD and the problems that are occurring to these soldiers when they come home. These are real issues. I don't think enough veterans are getting the kind of care that they deserve. The substandard kind of health care that they're getting. I was sent to a dentist recently to get a, a root canal done and I couldn't get a cap put on it because the army won't pay for it. Joe Blow can go to a dentist and get the same tooth with the cap, but as an American veteran, we can't get that kind of care. And I think that this is wrong and we need to keep raising our voices and speaking out against this kind of stuff. I think also that the censorship that the media, or excuse me, that the government is putting on us is wrong. I was at drill last weekend and I wasn't even gonna bring this up, but you know what, screw it. I'm already speaking. I, was gonna, I wasn't gonna bring this up. But I was at 
drill last weekend, and me and about six or seven Ron Paul supporters, while we were standing around doing nothing because there wasn't much to do, were sitting here talking about Ron Paul and politics. And a lieutenant came up to us and said, you guys cannot talk about politics or religion while you're in uniform. And, and I respectfully said to him, sir, I don't you think that's a little overboard that we're not allowed to talk about religion or politics? What, are we going to fire every chaplain in the military now? <laughs> and he said, hey, this came down from higher. Uh, you know, if you got a problem with it, put it up through your chain of command. So I did. I put it up to my squad leader. I said, hey, why are we not being able to talk about religion or politics in uniform? I'm still waiting on an answer, by the way. <laughs> don't never you, get you all know how the military grinds, and it tends to grind very slowly. Because there's no freedom! That's right, that's right. They keep... <laughs> we are being censored. Even, even today, there are active duty service members out there that aren't even allowed to take part in this march. They're, they have to be here as spectators. And, and this is ridiculous. They're on their own time, in civilian clothes, supporting what, what we have vowed to support, which is our constitutional freedoms. And not only did we vow to support the Constitution and to defend our country, but we've taken basically an oath to support Americans, and that's why we're here today. It's our blood! It doesn't end with a four-year contract. When we get out of the service, we're still trying to take care of every American out there by endorsing candidates like Ron Paul, by supporting people through different channels. I, I, I think this is amazing. I look out here today and I see a thousand people that believe in what they believe in and are not afraid to exercise their First Amendment right in that. And that is America. Yeah. And so, we come to our nation's capital today to the epicenter of the political corruption that's happening in this country, to march on the White House, and to show the world that Ron Paul is the choice of the troops. <laughs> that's really it. <laughs> hey, but this after party's gonna be great. Jordan Page, and Rebel Inc., and Golden State, and Amy Allen, uh, the, lead, the former front man from Misfits, it's going to be awesome. We are, we're all Ron Paul supporters. We're all brothers and sisters in arms. Whether even if you're a family member, you're still one of our pieces of family. And I'm so hum humbled and honored to be here today. Thank you so much for having me.